All right, so um, I want to uh, start covering chapter four uh, today. Obviously, uh, you've already watched a couple of videos, and so the purpose of watching those videos is kind of to uh, show you that there are unique differences between sports. Uh, and so oftentimes we think of the big four in North America, uh, football, basketball, baseball, and hockey. And then sometimes you can, some people refer to it as a big five, and they include MLS. Uh, and globally, uh, soccer is obviously uh, one of the most uh, popular sports. However, as we go throughout this chapter, we have to understand that there are unique differences between sports and the purposes, purpose of uh, understanding participants is that everybody has their own unique uh, differences and desires. So that's what we're going to cover here uh, over the next couple of chapters. And so, like I said, uh, what the whole purpose of this uh, chapter is to look at consumer behavior participants. How do they differ from spectators? What are their motivational differences? How do they come to making decisions? Uh, as it relates to the goods and services that they uh, purchase related to uh, their um, products. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh, this first section uh, is uh, participants as consumers, uh, and then the rest of this mo uh, chapter will we'll have separate videos for uh, cultural influences on participants, decision-making process, and then factors that affect the decision-making process. So let's jump into it. All right, so obviously um, majority of people uh, in the United States have some sort of what we call physical activity. Now it might be walking, uh, it might be running, and it might be playing competitive sports, um, but everybody usually has some sort of activity that they participated in or will participate in uh, or have in, in, in the past. And so uh, what you have to think about is, well, what is most popular? Well, the, the research suggests that uh, here's the top five uh, sports uh, that people actively participate in. Uh, exercise, walking being the, the largest one. Uh, swimming, and part of this is due to the popularity of uh, the World Cup, sorry, the Olympics over the last several years, uh, and uh, especially in the United States uh, with Michael Phelps and some other personalities coming in uh, and doing really well. We see big jumps in participation uh, after Olympic Games uh, in swimming of youth. Uh, also exercising with equipment uh, and camping and bowling. And so what I usually get from students whenever I, I suggest this is that they go, okay, well, I wouldn't have suggested those being the top five. You just mentioned uh, the big four. Well, we're talking about participation versus spectatorship. Uh, and, and so what they also say is, well, why is the, why are these things considered a sport? I mean, is exercise walking really a sport? And so what we have to think about is how do we define sport? And so from a marketing standpoint, we need to understand that people consider their activity important to them and that's what matters to us as marketers. Uh, if we're working for a fitness center, for example, we need to understand that people take pride in, in exercising with equipment, being on the treadmill every day, uh, achieving personal goals. And so uh, while def sport might be defined as uh, something that has competitive, um, has some sort of physical activity, and people have to uh, uh, maybe do exercise with other people or have some sort of activity with other people, others might disagree. So understanding that we have to understand who our consumers are before we can move on. All right, so how do we define participant consumer behavior? Well, it's listed in your book on page 105 uh, and defined here. It's actions uh, performed when searching for, participating in, and evaluating sports activities that consumers believe will satisfy their needs. And so I guess the, the most important thing to take away from this definition is searching, participating, and evaluating. It's kind of a three-step process. And so as we get later into this chapter, we'll talk a little bit about the decision-making process and some of those factors that affect the decision-making process. And so as participants, we need to understand, uh, sorry, as marketers, we need to understand how our participants uh, go about making decisions. All right, so there's basically two broad ways we can look at uh, participants as consumers from a sport marketer standpoint. One, Consumers uh, choose to participate in, in certain sports, and why do they go do those certain sports? Uh, a person who participates in a uh, recreational softball league uh, is a completely different participant than somebody who participates in a rugby uh, uh, competitive league. Or somebody who goes and runs a marathon is completely different than somebody who plays tennis with a friend on a, a casual basis. So understanding why they choose to participate in certain sports. And the second is the benefits that those participation uh, leaves with the consumers. And as we talked about earlier in the semester, utility is important. And so the benefit or the utility, the want satisfying power of a good or service in this circumstance, a sport, uh, what utility is are they producing for our consumers? And so... Uh, what I always ask people is, uh, this would be rhetorical obviously, but 
Uh, why do you think that there's there's participation differences be, between sports? And, and some of the most basic understanding is that there are cultural differences. So what I want to show you just briefly uh, some differences uh, between uh, countries in, in the United States. So here's an example of the UK sports. This, these are data from uh, the 2009-2010 uh, year, academic year. And what it looks at is uh, what schools are offering or what sports are offered during the school year. Um, and so, as you can see, it has data uh, from 2003 to 2010 each year, uh, and percent of those, uh, those individuals that have the opportunity to participate in that sport. Uh, and so football is obviously more popular. Dance is also up there. Athletics, which would be um, a variety of activities, gymnastics, cricket, rounders. And you can go down the list and you can see a lot of, of different types of sports. We won't get into that specifically, but as you see, this is all a different uh, than what I just showed you the five most participating participant sports in the United States are. Okay, uh, If we look at it from Australia, we break it down by who participates in which sport. Uh, soccer uh, is most popular, then cricket, basketball, netball, and then three different versions of, of rugby as well as volleyball. And so um, we have to understand why consumers participate in these certain sports, uh, and part of this is because of the culture and background. Uh, Canada, for example, has differences in ages. Uh, and between men and women, that's what this chart shows. Uh, the younger, uh, as you get older, people continue or are less likely to participate. Uh, and in Canada, men are more likely to participate uh, than women. All right, so what, what are the differences be between these countries? I've already stated it. It's culture. Uh, and culture is values, beliefs, preferences, tastes that are handed down from one generation to the next. Uh, and so while some cultural uh, values do change over time, the basic core value uh, of a culture does not. So let's look at some of the core values in the United States. For example, um, there are four basic uh, core values. One is the importance of home and life. Second one is education. Third one is youthfulness. And the fourth one is individualism. And so what I want to show you are just briefly a couple of uh, commercials uh, that are in the sport industry. Uh, and as you watch this, I want you to think about which one of these core values do you think apply to uh, that brand? Rotating coverage up to 300 feet gives you a detailed 360-degree view of structure, contour changes, and fish. So you can see them before they see you. Introducing 360 imaging, only from Hummingbird. Okay, so as you can see, that was just uh, one example of a uh, sporting good. That's, that is um, created for participants in this circumstance fishing. Let me show you another example. Again, think about... Oh, oops. wait till your dad sees this. Dad boy. Right. So that was Burton Snowboards. Let's go with BB Core Rawlings. There you go. I knew you'd be back. You grab me, the Rawlings Trio, the most advanced baseball bat on the planet. And check out my window, man. That's the window to power, to a batting title, to post game interviews. You and me? We're going to light this guy up. Looking good, right? And that first rounder on the mound, I don't care if he goes curve, slider, or he's just throwing gas. With me, you've got the bat speed to catch up to anything. The fellas in the lab say it's because my extended barrel, composite handle, and end cap. Look, man, all I know is I've got the biggest sweet spot in the game. And that's the difference between fouling one off and lacing one into the gap. 
All right, and it continues to go on. Uh, so what I wanted you to do as you're watching that, what are the cultural values? Uh, and so you might have come up with several answers. Uh, some of the more common ones that I hear uh, for all three of these are youthfulness and individualism. Uh, each of them discuss some sort of individuality. Uh, so I want to be the best uh, fisher, fisherman out there, and so I use the best and most um, innovative equipment. Burnt snowboards, obviously you don't see if these people are older or younger, but the style of music and the type of activity, you would assume that would be youthfulness. And then Rawlings, which uh, as you can tell, you know, we're looking at participant of, of baseball, which is typically youth uh, or younger age. Uh, and again, uh, highlighting the quality of the bat that would make them better, which would make them individualist, individualistic. However, you can kind of go to pretty much any type of, of uh, good or service in our society and, and look at one of these uh, or multiple one of these core values. And so what influences these core values? Well, part of it is who is, who is it that's in our uh, country? And so this is a basic demographic from the uh, census uh, in 2010. See, about 64% of the United States is white, 12.6% is African American, 16.3% is Latin or Hispanic, uh, and Asian Americans make up 4.8%, uh, and then another 26 from other uh, classifications. And so we see that, that we do have a um, somewhat diverse, however, there's arguing that there's argument that this will change in, in the next years to come. And that same year in 2010, Texas looked a lot different. Uh, and so we saw a larger Hispanic population a smaller African American population and a smaller uh, white population and so we see these cultural differences might influence us and we'll talk a little bit about these cultural differences in the next uh, video and so what about sport participation uh, are people participating based on their ge geographic location which arguably is influenced by the culture uh, that we are in and so as you can see the uh, darker the purple uh, so the, ca the Pacific area uh, they're the ones that um, participate the most. This is percentage of people that age 15 or older who engage in sport or exercise. This was in the mid-2000s. Um, we see purple uh, would be the largest, uh, and then blue would be the second, so the mountain region. Uh, and then finally, uh, at the very bottom, you've got 13% of those in the west, south, central, and east, south, central, which would be where uh, we are. Um, this is typically what we see as uh, low participation and so we can talk about differences in, in where people are participating and, and culture to that uh, part of it might be where we live and, and accessibility to um, act, physical activity um, it, there could be a lot of explanations and so we need to understand that participation is, is limited and not from, from a health standpoint that's, that's bad but as marketers, we don't understand why do people not participate and how do we get them to do it. And so that is uh, this first video. Uh, go ahead and uh, move on to the next uh, activity, which will be a discussion board.